Oh boy, I'm probably gonna rub some people the wrong way today, but just because you can use an app doesn't mean you have to. Hey there, njroot22.com here with a little bit of against, an against the grain vlog today. And this is about apps, primarily smartphone apps or tablet apps. Um, and I, I really think uh, you'd be hard to find anybody uh, under 65 that's completely disconnected from the uh, the technology world and uh, I'm really fascinated with 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 the the advent of the smartphone in the last couple decades and how everybody has has incorporated it into some people are extreme they do everything on their smartphone they have their shopping list they have their their uh, social media contacts and they're constantly taking pictures of themselves they've become this like kind of like lemming they're just they're just running in like a, what do you call it? a lab in a wheel or a rat in a wheel and, and they don't even understand how how deep they are in it but just for the sake of this argument here I'm gonna break the apps down into um, just some general groups here and, and I think one of the f first and foremost things that are problematic in our eyes are the uh, the social media apps and how everybody's now taking pictures of themselves constantly and one-upping their neighbors and they can't even experiencing experience anything anymore even something as simple as a meal with their family at a restaurant they've never been to without documenting it and I believe that's really changed the the, the whole men mentality of just living um, and I think those people can really, they, we lived without it for a long time. People didn't bring Polaroid Instamatics and envelopes and, and uh, postage stamps to write all their friends a postcard every time they went out to eat. That's the equivalent of doing it now, except it has that stupid easy button and they can do it in, in a few seconds with no effort or thought. They just do it. Um, I, I think that is just taking away from the actual experience of living and feeling and seeing and breathing what's happening. When your mind is thinking about doing it to, to send a message to somebody, to get somebody to think about you or to envy you or whatever it may be, um, or just to, you know, so you can be a superstar in your circle of friends in terms of the number of updates you have and everybody will think you're, you're up to all these things and, and you're just an ordinary person like everybody else. And most people, I watch people, um, when I'm waiting online somewhere, I, I watch some people who are sitting around use their, their phone and they spend like a second looking at that, that little post you made and they double tap it and they move on. They, they literally, it doesn't even get committed to memory unless they see it on their phone again. But another group of apps um, that I think are, are just general commerce apps. Um, you know, from buying everything you need, you know, your Amazon app, people bring their phones to the store and they, they, they'll go to Walmart and scan the barcode and they'll see that they can get it for a dollar cheaper at Amazon. They buy it on Amazon. They don't, or, or whatever it may be. And then there's the selling things, which is, which is, you know, I can't disagree with eBay or any of those other apps they have to, to sell things, but you don't necessarily have to be um, on your phone to do that. And then there's, of course, finance apps and, and uh, trading, trading uh, applications like, uh, I don't know, Robinhood is one of them. But, uh, and then there's the health apps, I guess Google Fit and Apple, uh, whatever, the, whatever that version is called. I don't have an Apple. But uh, they, people are now obsessively tracking their steps. They have fitness watches or the phone itself can track your steps and, and a lot of other things too. And they're constantly checking the, the progress. And I guess in some instances, it may help motivate you to walk a, a few more steps, and which is a good thing. I'm not going to uh, argue that it's not a good thing. But I'm wondering how people, you know, got in shape. There were, you know, there's more obese people today with all this technology at their fingertips than there were before these apps came around. Um, and I'm wondering for anybody who says they can... The, oh, I like counting my steps. It reminds me I have to take a uh, hundred more steps to m break that l arbitrary level, the round number of a thousand steps or whatever it may be, or 10 miles or whatever they're doing to stay active. What would happen if their phone went away or the, the functionality ceased to exist? Would they completely turn into a 900 pound land monster? I don't know. I mean, whatever happened to self-motivation? And if you're relying on that crutch to motivate you, I mean, you should be able to listen to your body and know that, hey, you know what, I, I didn't really do much today. Let me go walk around the block a few times. Like, 
when you rely on the computer or the app or the technology or the robot to, to motivate you, that becomes a little bit uh, concerning, no? Um, and then, of course, there's entertainment. I guess, you know, social media can be considered entertainment in its own right. I, I don't know if you've, anybody has seen TikTok. It's just, not, I, I look at it because I want to know what people are doing. I don't look at it, let's say, uh, rarely. Let's say once a month, I'll say, all right, let me, let me see what's going on here. And it's just people doing things on a video for a minute, and then they, you go to the next one. And some things are neat. You know, people are dancing, jumping, and there's funny things. But it's, it's an, I guess it's modern entertainment. Instead of sitting in front of your TV for half an hour, you're looking at TikTok and all these random people, and then you go on. I, I don't know. I don't, uh, and same thing with, the, I mean, I guess a lot of people play games on their phone. I mean, games have been around for a long time. I, you can't really get rid of them. And then there's people that watch movies on their phone, which I think is utterly ridiculous uh, to, when you have a 65-inch screen at home. But I don't think anybody should be watching movies anyway. It's just mindless entertainment and subtle psychological programming. But what I want to ask is, like, I don't think there's anybody who's under 35 or 40 years old who truly understands what it was like to be an adult before this technology came around and what you did with your mind and your time and so on. Um, the older people will understand, and some of them do, like myself, struggle to see the worth in this new technology. I'm not being a Luddite, per se, because I do use this stuff. I just, I try to be very in control of how they uh, uh, take our time up. And there's other people that might say that, sure, um, I can do a lot more things now. And... You're doing a whole lot of a little, you know, you're doing it, you know, faster, for instance. And that alone is worth thinking about. Do I need to be doing a hundred different things a day and juggling all this stuff? It, how does that affect your brain long term? Um, especially when it comes to deep thought, contemplation, just truly understanding the relationships between things. When you only have a few seconds doing all these things, that what happens to your brain and, and your capability to think uh, deeper thoughts and, and just, or be more calm in, your, in the way you react to things. I don't know. Uh, I'm really concerned about how it might affect uh, the future, the future generations. You know, I have to say, some people will say that this is just part of human evolution and these, the new, let's say, 40 or 60 or 80 years from now, people are going to be able to do a million things at once, like virtual computers. And that may very well come at a cost of, you know, lack of empathy or emotion or the ability to actually care about another human being because you're so uh, connected to these tasks, these digital tasks that you're doing and tapping and typing and filming. I don't know, you know, people will become very impersonal. It's quite possible. But I'm offering you a challenge. Um, besides any work requirements that you might use with your phone, can you give up all your apps, even the ones that you say are so great, such as your step meter and your fitness tracking and all that? Um, Maybe you've become spoiled by your, by your uh, new technology. And then, you, know, you could say, that, oh, well, the people from the 1700s would say, well, can you live without electricity or running water? I think that's a little bit of a different scenario. It's not apples to apples. These, these technology advancements are very minor in, in what they're replacing. Electricity and running water are like epic in comparison. But you know, if you tell me what app you think you need and can't live without, I'd love to hear about it. And I'm sure maybe you might be right. Maybe it's a wonderful thing. Like I like my banking app because I can deposit a check and not have to go to the bank. But you know, what's to be said about going to the bank? You could do a couple other errands at the same time. You could talk to a teller and a person and have human contact. I don't know. I mean, there's, you can look both ways, but Please hit the like and the subscribe and I'll see you next video. Thanks for watching.